we turn now to the politics of governing, the politics of persuasion and what it might take to convince the Trump administration to save Isabel's life. Joining us now is Maria Echeveste. She's a former deputy chief of staff to President Clinton and lecturer at the University of California, Berkeley School of Law. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, it, it, you've worked in, in a in a presidential administration, uh, you know the way the thinking works. You know the way persuasion works. Uh, what would what would you suggest as as a approach to try to persuade the Trump administration uh, to pull back on what is a death sentence? I think the first thing to focus on is to understand what is motivating this administration. Uh, to try to figure out how to persuade them. And unfortunately, every uh, step that this administration has taken on immigration is really rooted in what I believe is an effort to take discretion out of the system, because that's what this new rule is, to uh, just summarily say, you've been here we we're no longer accepting as a reason for you to be able to stay here that you are having critical essential medical treatment it is to take that discretion and to basically lose the humanity hide the humanity of immigrants so i'm i'm sort of at a loss frankly lawrence to say how would i persuade this administration to to withdraw this draconian a view of of immigrants as sort of not human, that they don't have stories in their individuals, and that uh, immigration authorities ought to be able to look at the context of each particular case and determine, in this case of Isabel, this is a case of life and death, as you heard from Dr. Harmitz. To expel her from this country, to deport her from this country, is frankly an act of murder because she can't get this treatment in Guatemala. So how would I persuade this administration? I, somewhere we've got to find a way to appeal to the, there must be some humanity in them somewhere. Don't you think, Lawrence? I, I do, and that's uh, exactly the perspective uh, from which I'm covering this story. And I, and I hope that, that it can reach people who have access to the president, uh, whether they are in government or out of government, uh, to make this case to him. This is a president who reportedly at the time, reportedly at the time, was moved by photographs of a child in Syria who was a victim of, of what was ha happening there. He was moved to missile strikes. Uh, according to the White House reports on this, uh, his daughter presented him with these photographs. And so if there's any truth to that, if there's just a sliver of truth to that, it seems to me that somewhere in that area is a, a space where something like this could could break through. I want to read you from a, uh, the letter, the uh, basically the deportation letter that was sent uh, to Isabel, because we now have a copy of it. And it says it was dated August 13th and giving her 33 days from August 13th. And it says, if you fail to depart the United States within 33 days of the date of this letter, uh, we may issue you a notice to appear and commence removal proceedings against you with the immigration court. So 33 days from uh, August 13th is September 15th. So on September 15th, they may commence, re send her a notice to appear to commence removal proceedings. Do you do you uh, have any estimate of if, if she gets one of those notices to appear? Will it be appear with, in, within a week? Appear within two weeks? What kind of timetable? No, no, they will they will set a date, and she will need to appear. And 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 let's be clear, there will be some time. But we also know from other efforts in, within the administration to speed up those processes, right? To to not give people the time to really prepare their case. But I want to say, in a case like this where your health and mental well-being is part of your ability to survive, imagine the, the, the stress and the damage that can happen to this young woman. So it is very likely that it'll be several weeks, perhaps a month, too. But the important thing is no one should, with this kind of condition, where leaving the country would be a death sentence, why does she have to go through this? And why should others not 
be able to present their case in a way that doesn't make them feel like their life is on the line, which is literally what is going on in this case. I do want to say one thing. Maybe when you think about persuasion, you know, Stephen Miller is, as we all know, the, a, if not the architect of this president's immigration policy, pretty close to it. What would it take to persuade him to think of human beings when he's coming up with these policies, that these are lives and families and individuals, human beings, with as much right to dignity as he has himself? Well, you know, I think the way the, a lot of these policies have been developed, it's entirely possible that the president himself knew nothing about this decision when it was made, knew nothing about these letters going out. And I actually, in this case, hope that is true, so that the knowledge of it might be something that he can choose to reverse the more we get attention to this. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.